Hi there, I'm Dave from Voidsmith Innovation and today we have a long-awaited video for you and this one is going to be outlining the actual operation of our controller going through all the settings basically a, a very quick rundown and a, and a very good training video for you and for your guys out in the field. We're going to be uh, demonstrating some of the things that are happening on the sprayer also that you won't be able to see from the cab but uh, how the flow meter and the servo, servo reacts and what and how they react when we change different things in the controller. So we're going to get a close-up view for you here and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. All right, so the first thing that you're going to notice when you look at the controller is the different menus that we have here, each outlining something different, monitoring something different on the sprayer itself. And we're going to go through volume and area first because those two are linked together. Once we put the, the knob on volume itself, we're going to be given a number, or if you just received your sprayer, it's probably going to say something like 0.0, .0 or maybe 5 to 10, maybe 100. That is just going to be what was um, run through the sprayer when it was leak tested. So this controller here, you can see that we're on volume, obviously, 119, and then we have a little number 1 by it. And what that is, is actually it corresponds to three different storage settings in the controller itself. Um, they're all the same because they've all been counting and it works just like the tripometer on your car. If you reset one, they all, it starts counting at zero again. If you do not reset them, they all count together. Um, the way that we move through those settings would be by pressing the up key. You can see we go one, two, three, back to one. Where this is very handy is it um, is tracking what is leaving the sprayer itself. So, um, and then obviously it, it does a running count of, of what has left the sprayer, whether it's through the night, through the entire season, um, at uh, anything that goes out of the boom with, with the booms turned on. So right now we're at 119. We've been doing some test runs with our test board here. If we would like to reset that to zero, maybe we're, we are going to track one parking lot for billing. Um, we simply hold the reset button, clears it to zero. You'll see as we go up through we still retain number two and number three. So this is really handy. What I usually tell my guys to do is I will take numbers one and two, clear them out, and those two spots can be used for um, whether it's a nightly total or for a um, lot by lot if we're billing out per gallon or doing some sub work for other contractors. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna count um, you know, how many gallons you did at this lot. You will have to reset it. So you'll write it down, reset it, and then um, it'll begin counting from zero again. I like number three as a running total for the truck or um, vehicle that is spraying as a, as a seasonal count. That way we can look through it and say, well, this truck sprayed 35,000 gallons or, or whatever the number might be. And that'll help judge route density for the truck. Um, we know if this truck is maybe spraying a lot more than other trucks, we can supplement routes, things like that. And it also is a nice um, system of check and balances against what, how much brine we have produced and how much brine we have actually sprayed. So um, definitely has some, some helpful potential there in counting for the entire season. If you reset it, no big deal. It's going to start counting from zero again. So volume, pretty simple. Tracks what has left the sprayer. If we turn to area, you're going to see it is set up the exact same way as volume. We have the same one, two, three um, storage settings like we do on volume, but this is tracking the area that is actually covered. Um, normally, they will come set up in acres, so we have gallons per acre. Number one, cor number one in area correlates to number one in volume. Same with two and three. Now you will see we if we cleared out volume one and two, we're at zero. We left three, and now we have 1.6 acres. If we turn to volume, we did 109 or 119 gallons on 1.6 acres. This is a really nice check too. It also goes into route density. Let's say if we had that 30,000 gallons um, over X acres, we could figure out what that truck's average application rate is. Obviously dividing the, the gallons by the area itself, that gives us gallons per acre. And what we want to see is that should be hovering around the rate that we're usually running on. So again, remember the numbers, 30 to 50 gallons per acre pre-treating, 80 to 100, a um, little bit of give and take there depending on your climate uh, for post-treatment. So what we're going to see is usually the trucks are going to average right around that oh, 85 if we're doing a lot of post-treatment, maybe 90, somewhere maybe in the 50 to 60 range if we're doing a lot of pre-treatment and post-treatment. 
either way, if that number is very far off from what our average application rates are, we know that's a problem and likely it'll be linked to either a flaw in the system potentially. We don't usually see that as much as we see operator error, um, operators that heavily over apply. Now remember, this is only counting um, the spray width and what is leaving the sprayer. So if you double pass an area, it will count that as a new area sprayed. Where we see this number get off is uh, operators that um, they double pass areas very frequently. So basically they're covering the same area twice, doubling their acreage, thus doubling their application rate. So things like that will be, will be monitored in here. It's not gonna be always easy to see because um, we are counting that area, but you know if that truck had a consistent route of 15 acres, you can kind of deduce the acres that the truck sprayed. So definitely gives you a lot of insight to what is happening with the equipment, what is happening with your routes and vehicles and how operators are, are tracking or applying the liquid itself. So remember, one, two, three all together, move through with the up key, and you can reset at any point in time. If you reset area, it does reset volume and vice versa. As we go to volume per minute, this is the instantaneous flow rate of the system, which means if I were to turn my sprayer on here, it will tell me how many gallons per minute are leaving the, the system. Um, kind of a hard number to quantify. As our speed increases, you can see that our flow increases. That is the entire heart and um, way that the GPS rate controlled systems actually operate. Higher speed, wider spray width, more flow, less speed, lower or um, narrower spray width, less flow. Generally, I do not run on this when I am spraying. It is a hard number to quantify. What I do look for if I do run on it is if my speed increases, my flow rate increases. There is a setting where this is very important in manual mode that we will get to uh, towards the end of this video. Tank level, that's a nice one. Um, it, it will be programmed for the sprayer that you have. So if you buy a thousand gallon, this number will, will read a thousand, 305, um, it'll read 305. So pre, they come pre-programmed from us here with the, to the size tank that, they are, that you are running. You'll notice as I hold the up key, it automatically resets to the full level of the tank. That's really nice because uh, you don't have to go in there and press the up key to get to your, your desired range. You can back it off. If you only have a half tank in, you can back it off to 150, 100, whatever you might have in the tank. Um, and all this does is actually just counts backwards. There's no float system in the tank. There's no monitoring system. It knows that if this many gallons left in volume, that many gallons are out of the tank. So it's going to be a number that's very close to what is in the tank, but it might not be 100% accurate. If you only put 290 gallons in, reset it to 305. Um, you might be off by that that 10 percent or so but the nice thing about that is you can quickly check on the fly without having to get out and look at the tank itself so you might might be the difference of do i go to the next job or do i go and fill up um, so it helps you quite a bit there with with time we're going to jump over to the other side distance and area per hour those are kind of meaningless um, settings and, and, and tr things that track different things directly from the ag world. Like I said, you know, everything that we do here comes from the ag world, just different application rates, different speeds and different methods. So distance is going to be a linear count in feet of how many feet you sprayed. You can reset at any point in time. It does not matter. You don't need to worry about it. Area per hour will tell you how many acres you are spraying at set speed and set uh, spray width. Doesn't matter. Kind of cool to see if you're bored when you're out spraying. Um, any of these can be monitored at any point in time when you're spraying. You will not disturb the rate control functions of the sprayer by changing on the fly. So, but those two, honestly, don't worry about them. Speed is going to be a speedometer readout. There's a couple different things or reasons why I might use this. One is it's going to tell me when I'm connected to the satellites. So if I'm getting a speed readout when I'm moving, that means that I have satellite reception. Two would be uh, checking against your speedometer in your truck. This one is very accurate. So if you're again bored, you can run this as a speedometer. I've done that a few times, <laughs> but really um, kind of a backup to the system. There are some things we do with test speed with it. You will never need to worry about. 
Another reason why these are here is there's other settings in the controller that these are linked to. So we couldn't completely remove them from the controller itself. So in, in short, distance, area, power, speed, really don't worry about them. Rate is the magic one. That is going to be what you are telling the sprayer to apply per acre when you are in the auto mode. So at any point in time, you can change that number. And what that's going to correlate to is your application rate of gallons per acre. So you can see I'm at 80, 81. When I run on rate, that is, it is going to tell me some other things too. You see, as I turn the spray boom on, it's going to say 80, but you kind of saw how it jumped up from, well, now the servo is open, how it jumps up from zero to 64. I'm not going fast or I'm going too fast here with this, with this setup, but um, it's going to change and fluctuate a little bit when you're out, out in the field spraying. But what you want to see it do is balance on that number that you have it set to. Not only is it the rate that you set, it is also your instantaneous rate that you are applying, which is a great check in the field. Because if I'm spraying at 80 gallons per acre and all of a sudden I see that number dropping off as I'm spraying, let's say if I increase my speed. This, uh, this test system that we have here has limited capabilities of flow meter readings and uh, total flow output. So we can actually manipulate it to go underneath some of these um, parameters that our sprayers could actually hit. So now I increase my speed to almost 12 miles an hour and you can see that we're at 72.2 gallons per acre. This would be a great indication in the field as you're spraying that you would look at it and say, okay, I'm set at 80. Why is it saying 72? Because that's actually what you're putting down. Now on our sprayers, you will, you will never see these numbers until you're starting to hit, or you, you'll never see it drop below your application rate until you're starting to hit either high spray speeds paired to high application rates um, when the tank is starting to get low and it's cavitating, it's drawing air, or maybe you have a filter plugged. So by running on rate, it can actually diagnose quite a few different problems in the system. If your tank is full, you're running at a normal application rate and you know normal speeds 10 to 15 miles per hour, and this number is not reading correct, or it's not reading what you have set, um, and it's consistently low, that's a good time to check the filter on the sprayer. It might not be able to get enough flow to the system. What this is always telling you um, is that rate that you're putting down per acre. So I always, always run on rate. It is incredibly important. It'll tell you right away when things are wrong. Do not be concerned when you start and stop if that number fluctuates a little bit. And usually it's gonna start very high and then turn itself down. Always run on rate. It's gonna tell you a lot of great information uh, it'll help you diagnose a lot of different problems. And it'll also help you adapt your driving um, techniques to make sure that you're always tuning in on that number. Remember, the more we can maintain that number, the more consistent our application rate will be. So that is the, the controls in a nutshell. Um, one thing I'll address very quickly, you'll see the auto man button. Auto mode is obviously everything that we just talked about where it will adjust the flow rate to your boom based upon your, sp your speed and your spray width. Manual is kind of a cool uh, setting in there and it, it, it takes a dynamic spray system like what we have with the flow control to a static spray system. Um, and there are a couple uses for it. The first would be very slow speed application um, in high traffic areas like loading docks. You'll see in all of our videos, I had probably at least mentioned it once that I run in manual mode in areas where I'm backing up maybe at one or two miles an hour. I would still be putting down my 80 gallons breaker, but I have no pressure in the system and no flow that's actually gonna help penetrate through that snowpack. So what manual mode does is it allows us to set our servo at a certain um, percentage open, just like you would with a manual valve and what we need to do is we need to turn on our, uh, the boom that we want to spray out of on volume per minute. Remember when I said this is where it comes back to uh, the only time that we use volume per minute. Now it's going to be telling us gallons per minute that are flowing out of the sprayer itself. Now with the up and down keys, I can mimic the same motion I would as opening or closing a manual valve. So you can see I can increase my flow or I can decrease it. Don't be caught off guard if it's wide open, you know, 20, 30, 40, maybe even 100 gallons per minute, something like that when you first open it, because that servo is gonna lock on to the last position it had when you close the valves in auto and switch to manual. 
just hold your key down until you get to your amount that you want. Now, if we're doing most of those areas, we're not gonna be going over 10 gallons per minute. Anything past that is gonna be a, a very, very heavy over application. So be mindful of that. If you're, you don't need to have this number cranked up a tremendous amount to be able to, to de-ice effectively. So what I tell guys, seven to 10 gallons per minute for some of that slow speed work. Um, and then your valves will operate just like they do normally. Remember, in manual mode, you can open them up if you're not moving. In auto mode, you will not be able to open your valves up until you begin moving. So be mindful if there's someone standing behind you or you are personally getting out and, and seeing what's happening. Maybe you're in your shop, they will open up and they will make a mess. So the other time manual mode is, is nice is if there is something that does fail on the system potentially, um, the flow meter, a wiring harness, something like that, you're not getting a reading. You can still override the system by that setting your gallons per minute here. Um, you will not be accurate but you will still be able to have something coming out of the, the truck itself to, to get the job done for the night. Generally where we see this happening, um, potentially a flow meter harness corrosion issue or a GPS receiver wiring issue. Anyone who runs it through the cab, maybe runs it through the door, which is something we don't advise, um, can have some wiring issues there. So you will still be able to control the servo um, and, get, and produce a flow rate with this manual mode. Now the kind of the cool thing is if your your flow meter is not potentially reading or some other system issue, if your GPS receiver is still working, you can still get a readout of how many gallons per acre you're applying. So you can see as we're spraying, you know, we're still getting readout 86 point eight gallons per acre at a speed of 8.4 miles an hour at a flow rate of 9.8 gallons per minute. So again, if you are forced to run in manual mode to spray, you don't feel like you have to be up in that 30 gallon per, 30 gallon per minute range unless you're running maybe the three lane boom. At the single lane boom, you do not need a tremendous amount of flow to be able to produce um, some very high application rates at decent speeds, you know, eight miles an hour. That is the rundown of the, of the manual mode. So remember what we do for an auto, manual, volume per minute, turn our boom section on that we wanna spray and adjust our flow rate from there. The last thing to talk about guys would be your run hold switch. A uh, very simple feature on the controller itself. It is a boom lock. So when I have it in hold, I cannot turn my valves on whether I'm in manual mode or automatic mode. Um, where this is nice is traveling down the road, potentially if your sprayer is running. If you are in auto mode and traveling down the road at 60 miles an hour and you accidentally flip the switches on while reaching for your Mountain Dew or Monster, it is going to try to spray. It thinks you're moving, the, the valve's just turned on, you will be uh, doing the county estate um, a favor by de-icing the roads for them. So I will usually lock the booms if I do travel down the road with it running. Another nice feature of it is if you are doing a lot of three lane boom spraying, maybe with a larger truck, you can simply flip the hold switch instead of trying to flip three switches at once. So once you turn it back to run, they'll all turn back on, hold, and that'll work for any combination. Well, there you have it, guys. That is the rundown of the controller itself. For any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, questions on YouTube, uh, Facebook, all that good stuff. Feel free to call the office. We'll, uh, we'll be able to answer any questions for you.